Welcome to Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, coming to you from the rolling hills of Big Spring Valley in beautiful Alabama. Katherine Lang offers words of encouragement and hope to help grow up lives boldly pursuing peace and joy. Katherine seeks out the rainbows of life while sharing her lollipops of encouragement along her journey. Here on Growing Hope, she features words to help hope and grow courage, all while challenging herself and listeners to radical choices and bold purpose. This is Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, where we are growing hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. And now, here's your host, Katherine Lang. Hello there, and welcome to this week's Growing Hope Radio, the first episode of Growing Hope for the year 2016, and a special episode because I'm pushing past where I was and into where I want to be, and I'm putting to work the whiteboard of world domination and my focus folder and building a tribe that is not just supportive of me, but that I am actively invested in being a part of. Now, the holidays led me to a place of comfortable acceptance. I was ready to settle into the end of the year and wait for the new year to make my next move. Because, after all, it was the holidays, right? We all need a break. I was happy to be here. And I was looking forward to getting there. But, I wasn't taking any action for the moment. And then I was challenged to be more and to do more because of the words shared from a friend. And how often is it that the words we share to each other are the things that motivate us and push us to where we never thought we could go before? And all he was doing was talking to me, sharing his own journey, sharing what was going on in his life. And it ignited me to want to be more, and to want to do more. Now it's time for He Said, She Said. He Said, She Said. He Said, She Said. He Said, She Said. said. Break it down. (laughs) What is organization? Oh, perfect, perfect topic for this time of year, don't you think? Uh, I don't know what organization would have to do with this time of year other than people putting their New Year's resolutions together. Exactly. Because so many times that that's what people are trying to do. They're trying to organize their home or they're trying to organize their lives or they're trying to organize their schedules. Mm, okay. So, what is organization to you? Everything has a home. Everything useful has a home. If it isn't useful, it needs to go to somebody else's home. (laughs) So, did you... um, Somebody has been posting this thing on Facebook where the first of the year is a great time to take all your clothes and turn the hangers backwards... So that at the end of six months, you can look and see which clothes you haven't worn. Because when you you wear them and put them back in, you put the hangers back in right. Is that the kind of stuff that you see for organization? Or do you see organization as a one-shot deal? Oh, organization has to be continual. Not just every six months. (laughs) Not just, I mean, it's, it's in perpetuum. Otherwise, it is not organized. Okay, can organize is organization the same for everybody? Do you think? Oh no, <laughs> some of us are actually organized. <laughs> I laugh because the other day you told me um, I had gone to the restroom at Sunday school and the ladies were talking about how organized I was and how I was embarrassing them because I was so it organized. It shows how bad off they are. <laughs> No, you have you have very well grown, and I have relaxed, which is why we work so well together, because opposites do attract. But you have to admit that your idea of organization and my idea of organization come from very different life 
lessons, and therefore I value certain types of organization more than you do. For instance, the pantry. Everything on the left side of the pantry is baking and breakfast. If you, if you move something into the right side of the pantry that's supposed to be in baking and breakfast, I'll never find it. And now you know my world, <laughs> living with you. But, but your pantry is organized for your organizational skills. Right. You know where everything goes, and you know when someone's put something in there in the wrong place. Correct. Correct? Correct. Okay. Now, imagine knowing where everything is, and someone keeps coming in and redecorating the house. <laughs> Who would do something like that? Well, someone who thinks it's funny for people to fall over things during the night. But you got to re realize that in my world, and sometimes you have to come over and live in my world, I have to live out things for a few days or a few weeks or sometimes a few months before I realize that there's a better way or a better place for them to be utilized. They need a new home. Okay. And that's why, for me, organization isn't a... It is a six-month... It looks like I'm not doing anything, but I am. Okay. Kind of like with the hangers. That's why I thought the hangers idea was such a good idea. Because you could go through your clothes all day long, but you really don't know what it is you're wearing or not wearing until you practically do it. Well, that's, that's, that's a whole other world... From me and my, you know, <laughs> four shirts, dozen shirts, you know, half a dozen long sleeve, half a dozen short sleeve. Okay, we're good. Well, schedule. Different people have different organizational Traits. ways of doing yeah. things. Right. Uh, I have learned this. There can be a desk with everything in its place, and anyone walking in there could find anything because of how it's organized. However, there can be a desk that looks completely disheveled, like someone has broken in there and <laughs> ransacked the place. But the person that organized that desk, if you ask them for something, they'll know exactly where it is underneath the copy-stained paper towel and next to the rotting banana peel. <laughs> but they'll know where it is. Yes. So we we have different we have different skill levels. Right. So organization is everything having a home and everything being in its home, but it can be unique to each individual. That's right. What do you say? Share your thoughts, opinions, or questions by emailing radio at katherinelang dot com and include he said she said in the subject line. It's really funny because right after this show or this segment was taped I asked my husband to put a paper of my son's back in his school books and this man the one that is so detailed and methodical about so much he just set the paper on top of all the other school books instead of taking the paper and putting it inside the book that it should have been in in the first place <laughs> and it was just a perfect reminder for me and I laughed because just a few minutes before he had explained how organization is having everything in its place. But for that moment, its place was with the school books, like I told him. Sometimes we need more than one reminder that organization is personal. So unless there are other people that are sharing your space, and yes, others can include spouses or children then you have to make your organization work for you. Now, like my husband mentioned, when there are other people involved, then adjustments may be necessary. And I want to tell you that if I want to make sure the baking items stay with the baking items, then I have to make the choice to put the baking items away myself. Or I have to be close enough when groceries are being put away to give direction and guidance about where they need to go. Same thing goes for my husband. If he wants the dishes put in the dishwasher a certain way, then he has to make the choice to put the dishes in the dishwasher that certain way. Or he goes behind us and does it. <laughs> yes, we know that. But it's okay. We have to find our own unique ways of organization. 
Organization is about finding a place for everything and then putting everything in its place. But it can be unique to your space or to your resources or to your life experiences. If it works, then it works. My idea of order is different than it was 20 years ago, and it's definitely different from my husband's. But, but I'm always trying new things and, and learning new ways. Yes, I really did used to change out the furniture almost every time that poor man left the house <laughs> because I was trying to find the setup that would work best for how we utilize the space. And sometimes we change how we utilize the space, so I have to change up where the furniture goes. I want to find the most effective way to make the most of our resources and what God has given us. And with each change and each investment, I'm learning to be more organized. Keep in mind that organization that works for you and that you utilize will save you time because you won't waste any time trying to find what you're looking for. And organization will save resources because you won't be buying items that you already have because you'll be able to find them in the first place. Organization will save you stress because there's just something calming and peaceful about stress because our God is a God of order. Growing Hope Radio needs to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking more about using it. Mason Hawks of the United Earth Central Corps. I've encountered an unidentified spacecraft that has refused to answer all attempts to communicate. It has reacted in a hostile manner and launched several combat fighters to engage me. My ship is damaged and I'm not going to make it, so I've done a memory scan and embedded it in this transmission. Please. I'm not sure how I got here or even where here is. Can you boost the signal? I woke up in the wreckage of a crashed shuttle. Is anyone receiving this? Can anyone out there hear me? The relay satellite has been destroyed. My signal's too weak. If you can hear this, you've got to warn Earth. We are being invaded. There's no hope of warning Earth in time. The aliens that shot down my shuttlecraft plan to take over UCC territory. Disimating the station. I'm stranded on this primitive backwater planet and trapped in some kind of experimental biosuit. We are being attacked by some There's sort of... too many of them. Some sort of shape-changing alien beings. If you are receiving this... Please, relay the warning to Earth. Stars of the Conry by S.P. Dorning. Ask for it at your local bookstore or order it on Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble today. Audio produced by SpiritBlade.net. Christian sci-fi and fantasy. Unsterilized, unsafe. Welcome back to Growing Hope Radio, where I, Catherine Lang, your faithful and faith-filled rainbows and lollipops host, well, I am motivated and encouraged to do so much more for this new year. I spent the last few weeks of the previous year reviewing what I had done and what I had accomplished and what I hadn't so much done and accomplished. And I also looked at all that I had invested in the endeavors that I had been pursuing. And I realized that I really slacked off at the end of the year. Like I said before the break, I settled into a place of comfortable acceptance of where I was, at least for those last couple of months. Because of my review process, I added some words to the side of my whiteboard of world domination this year. It reminds me of what my past year was. I made some review words, and these this year my words are almost, just enough, and illusion. See, I almost wrote 500,000 words in one year. I'm part of the 365K Club that formed through the 10-Minute Novelist Facebook page. And we encourage and support each other in attempting to write words every single day. And I needed to write 1,000 words a day in order to reach my 365K challenge. Well, not only did I get the encouragement to write every single day, but I got the encouragement to reach my 365K challenge challenge back in, I believe, June or July. So I really didn't sweat the end of the year. I finally, I I didn't even register what I had been doing with the group for November and December because I knew I wasn't reaching my thousand word goal or my 
goal of writing every single day of the month. But when I finally added my words that I wrote in November and December to our team totals, it turns out that I was just shy of 6,000 words, reaching 500,000 words for the year. That's a huge accomplishment for anyone at any time, but it was a particularly huge accomplishment for me. I almost reached a milestone, but almost will never get me there. And I chose just enough because even in the beginning when I was writing almost every day, there were still those days when I did just enough to be able to say that I wrote. My target for each day, like I said, was a thousand words, but some days I just wrote a short blog post of 300 words or sometimes even less than that so that I could say that I had written that day because I did. I wrote something. Just enough spread over into my family and into our home. I did just enough to say that I had straightened the house (laughs) or that I had started the laundry or that I had worked in the garden. I did just enough to say that I had fixed food. I did just enough to get by. Just enough will not get me to that place that I desire. I know that. And just enough creates the illusion that I'm moving in my direction, in that right direction, into towards the place that I want to go. Which is why illusion it was my third word for the year-end review. I created the illusion that I was doing what needed to be done. It looked like I was accomplishing things. It looked like I was moving in the right direction. Maybe I like the idea of people feeling sorry for me because I did so much, but I had not received my breakthrough. Whatever the reason, it was an illusion that I had created. I know and I fully believe that if I'm walking in the path that God has for me, then my breakthrough comes not because of what I'm doing, but because of what he has done. He has won the victory. He has cleared the path. He has made it happen. It is done. Not it is going to happen or it might happen or it could happen. It is complete. So when I moan and groan about how things aren't happening, but I'm doing all these things, all this just enough and all this almost, then I'm painting an illusion. And the illusion will never get me through the breakthrough. Now, before the break, I was sharing with you a conversation that I had with my friend and an igniter for my life, Gene Hendricks from Mobile, Alabama. Gene was my running buddy in college and one of my dearest friends. And on many days, he was my inspirational compass. He did so much for so many and with such a heart of gratitude and a focus on the cross that it just made me want to be more than I was. While Gene and I talked, the first time we had talked in four years, it had been a long time since we had had a chance to speak. But he reminded me that I am created for such a time as this. This is why I'm here. He also reminded me that no matter what I may be going through in my life right now, it is up to me to make it or I can choose to allow it to break me. He should know. I mean, Gene has been through a lot. Gene owns a tree trimming company down in Mobile, and he built that company working from before sunrise until way after the sun set. He shared with me that the neighbors thought his wife was a single mom because he was gone before they got up, and he didn't return until after they had all gone to bed. He worked hard because that is what you're supposed to do, right? Well, one day, Gene was working hard, just like he thought he was supposed to be doing, and he was in a 50-foot tree. And something happened, and he slipped. He fell down from that tree and landed on his head. The emergency room were, I mean, the emergency workers that arrived to the scene thought he was dead. But they worked on him anyway, and Gene started to breathe. He was flown to the hospital where the medical personnel expected him to be a vegetable until he started talking. Then the doctors warned his family that Gene would likely be completely paralyzed for the rest of his life until he started moving his head and his arms. Gene told me that falling from that tree saved him and saved his marriage. He said he, he told me he does still own the company, but his focus has shifted. 
Now he manages from the truck and not from the tree. He spends his time reading the word and not focused on the business. He writes words inspired from the word and from his observations, and then he shares those words freely with the people that he encounters. I've spent much of the last few years allowing things, situations, circumstances to break me. Allowing me to break me. It's never been my circumstances that have held me back. It has always been me. I have made choices within my circumstances that have crushed my walk. I chose to put off my actions until tomorrow. Until tomorrow. Not because there wasn't time in the day, but because I didn't want to put forth the effort. The more I put it off, the stronger my habit for putting it off grew. Breaking strong habits is way more resource stealing than starting off down the right path in the first place. And it, it takes more to break a habit than it does to put that habit into place to start with. I chose to listen to my head when it came to food instead of to my natural body signs. I know what it feels like to be hungry. In my personal body, it is a deep, hollow feeling just above my belly button. And most of the time, usually during Sunday school or church, <laughs> there's a growl loud enough for others to hear. <laughs> Despite what I know about hunger and what I understand about food and how it fuels the system, I made choices to feed the cravings of the mental and spiritual part with something physical. And that choice has layered up on me into an uncomfortable place. I also chose to wait around for income bringing opportunities because I deserve them. I am that good. <laughs> I have the wisdom and the knowledge to create opportunities, y'all. I know what it takes. I know what you have to invest. I have the ability and the talents to follow through when I see a door or a window that even has a crack. Instead of doing what I know to do, I have made the choice to wait and wait for that opportunity to come knocking I've made the choice of inaction, and these two choices have created a habit of inaction. I've been making consistent choices in my life to build habits to not use the talent that God has given me. Too often when we are given a gift or a blessing that we do not use, then it's taken from us and given to another. Ugh. You know, I just recognized that I have become that servant that hid the talent in the ground. I've never wanted to be that servant. I've always wanted to be the one that took the five and turned it into ten. Or took the one and turned it into ten. I want to be the one that puts what God gave me to work, to hard work, to multiplying work. <sighs> this was not the lesson that I wanted for today. But I have been hiding what God has given me because it seems easier and safer. And at least I wouldn't lose it and make the master angry. Only the truth is that the only way that we make the a master upset is by not using what he has given us. Gene's words had a profound effect on me. As I sat listening to him share his story, I was rocking on the back porch listening to his words of hope and encouragement, and I realized that my limitations, they're all of my own making. Gene reminded me that a life in Christ is a life of restoration. Maybe I did mess up, and maybe I did make bad choices, but that was yesterday. The only thing that could fix any of that now is making the right choice this time. Once I choose to do what God has led me to do and to step out in faith in God, God will restore what the enemy stole from me. When I make the choice to turn to God with all of my heart and with all of my soul and with all of my mind and with all of my strength, then God returns to me with the locust devoured. As a matter of fact, God has already fully restored everything to me. I've already mentioned that it's finished. It's complete. It is one. 
He's just waiting for me to choose his will and his way and to get out of my own way in this journey. We all have a promise of restoration. And for me, it was Jean's words that moved me from a place of mourning about what might have been if only I had moved past almost or just enough or the illusion. His words catapulted me into that place of rejoicing because of the actions of God. It's not me. It's never been me. That will bring my desired success in my unique place. It's not me that does it. It is God. And it is that promise that makes the difference. This year, for my focus word, I've chosen fervent. But I tell you, in sharing with you, I almost replaced the word that I've written on my whiteboard of world domination, and I almost made my focus word restore. Because this is going to be a year of restoration, as long as I continue to make the choices that Jean catapulted me towards in that conversation. But I've left fervent as my anchor position in my, that whiteboard of world domination because I know that it will be my fervent focus and my fervent actions that will make the way for my life and around my life to be restored by my Father. Not because of what I'm doing, but because of what He did. When I align myself with Him, then I live in that place called restored. It really is that easy. It's amazing to me that we want so much for it to be complicated, and I don't know why we think in order for it to be of value, it has to be complicated. I was just talking a few minutes ago with some friends about how, you know, he wrote it down. He wrote down the answer. He made it that simple for us. If uh, my people who are called by my name will turn from their wicked ways and will worship me, then I will restore their land. All God wants from me, all God's required of me, is that I turn my attention and my focus to His will and His way and His walk. And that in doing that, I make the way for His will and His way to be revealed in my life. Instead of worrying about how I'm going to fix it, I just need to rest in his fixed. I learned a lot from Gene. And I mean, I've always learned a lot from Gene because his focus of possibility thinking puts mine to shame. <laughs> and that's kind of a scary place for me because I have always been the most positive person in the room. But he sees adversity as a blessing in a way that just tore at my heart because I recognize that when you choose to see God in whatever circumstances are facing you, then possibility is all that you can encounter. I'm, my prayer is that that will be my focus in my fervent pursuit this year. Growing Hope Radio is going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll be digging more into how to use it or lose it. Christian Women Affiliate is a free community for Christian women who seek to be all that God has called them to be, with many affordable services, including radio and webinar hosting and an outstanding review crew. You have many exciting opportunities for promoting your message. Join Christian Women Affiliate today and make quality connections that lead to mentoring and resources that complement your calling and impact our world. Visit ChristianWomenAffiliate.com today. There will always be an excuse. There will always be a reason not to keep going. There will always be something that tries to hinder my journey. In truth, the only thing that gets in the way of the journey looks back at me from the mirror every day. I am the only person, the only thing, that can hinder my success. Place and Purpose is a book that offers my own experiences with discovering that unique path and uncovering the truth that they don't hold the answers to my journey. I break it down to four simple questions. Why, what, how, and when. 
When you answer these questions for yourself, then you will be closer to that unique place designed just for you. Here are some of the things that are being shared about place and purpose. Catherine shares many ways that you can get closer to God and begin to identify that missing part of your life. Place and Purpose offers practical tips for digging into a personal relationship with God so that I can recognize His purpose for my life. Catherine Lang has filled this book with wonderful advice for beginners, but also practical advice for the seasoned believer. Get your copy of Place and Purpose by visiting www.catherinelang.com slash books and begin to answer the why, what, how, and when of your journey. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Welcome back to Growing Hope Radio. A new year, a new boldness. I'm in pursuit of the, to use the talents that God has given me. And I'm encouraging each and every one of you to pursue those talents with boldness. You have a talent. You need to be pursuing it. I am Catherine Lang, and I am your proud rainbows and lollipops host because I know the promise, and I believe the promise, and I am stepping out in the promise. And it's my prayer that each and every word I share with you will encourage you in this same pursuit of promise. Now, I visited with my friend Gene Hendricks from Mobile, Alabama, and I heard him talk about the promise he found in the adversity he faced. Imagine that. Promise and adversity. I would have expected him to do some complaining or some whining about his situation, but the closest he came was mentioning that he wanted to do more with what he had been given. My place of encouragement is a solid foundation for me. I'm used to being the one that provides the inspiration for especially others that are in a place of difficult circumstances. But to have someone in what I consider difficult circumstances encouraging me on purpose, it was a strange place to be. And even more amazing about our conversation was the fact that I don't think Gene set out to be an encouragement to me. He was just doing what Gene does, being a friend visiting, sharing, laughing. He was showing his heart and his joy. It's his generosity, something that has always flowed freely from him, that poured over the phone line and over my own heart. He may not be able to use his legs anymore because of an accident that he was in, but that has not slowed him down from using the gifts that God has given him. He is the good and faithful servant, and he's putting his gifts to work for God and through God. His words were a reminder to me that I have to use what God has given me, or I may lose it. If I do not cry out my praise to God, then the rocks will step in and do it for me. And doing it part way or almost, or just enough, it's not good enough. I have to dig in and do it with determined focus, with bold purpose, with consistent action. I reviewed the past year and realized I was on the verge of losing it because I was not doing all that I could do, or even most of what I could do. I was doing just enough to present an image of doing. I've never been one to hide who I am. I've always walked through life mask-free. Yes, there were moments of falter where I'd put on a mask for a season, but when I started creating today's show, I took a hard look and realized that, you know, I spent the last decade wearing a mask. Now, this could be a show about how that mask has led me into a dark hole or a pit, or it could be a show that shared all the struggles that I'm facing because of the mask, But if my talk with Gene Hendricks showed me anything, it is that my God is powerful enough to provide restoration no matter where my mask has taken me. And that's what today's show is about. I have to take off the mask, though. I have to choose to change my direction. I have to put my attention wholly on the cross. I have to stop looking back at what might have been. I have to believe the promises that have been given me. 
I haven't decided which part of this mask-free journey will be the scariest or the most difficult, but I do know that when I step out in this journey, I will be on my way to a fully restored life, one that is more than I could have imagined. And believe me, I have a powerful imagination. (laughs) See, God completed the perfection of me long before I came along. He provided prosperity and blessings of exceeding abundance. And he won the completed victory. He did it all. It is finished. I'm not living in that place right now because I have chosen not to live there. (laughs) I mean, does that sound as crazy as I think it does? If you were told that you had provision without end, would you choose to live a life of lacking? But see, I have. And I know often we all do. Because I've chosen this broken world over the completion of my Father. Today's show is about taking the step to make the most of the talents that my Father has provided because I know that soon and very soon... The master will return and will demand an account of how I use the talents he provided. And I want to give my account and hear the master declare, Well done, good and faithful servant. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm waiting for. That's what I am pursuing because of the encouragement and the focus that was given to me by my friend, Gene Hendricks. Sometimes it's the words of our friends and the focus that our friends give us and the encouragement that our friends give us that makes the difference in this journey. It's what helps me see that I am not where I want to be. And I have missed opportunities. But my God, my God can repair, replace, and restore so much more The enemy, others, circumstances may have stripped and stolen, but my God can repair and renew more than anything or anyone could ever hope to take. It's up to me to stay focused on Him. And when I choose to do that, then I choose to live in that place of victory, in that place of restored. Now, Growing Hope has to take a quick break, but when we come back, I'm going to dig in deeper to five steps that I'm taking to become a better steward and to live in this place of restoration. Growing Hope Radio will be back after these messages. This is your Growing Hope Scripture Focus. Each week, I will share with you a favorite Bible verse and challenge you to memorize and study that verse over the next seven days. By putting the Word of God in our hearts and in our minds with consistency, those words will settle in and begin to grow fruit that shows forth in our own words and in our actions. This week's scripture is Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. See, the focus makes all the difference. When I turn to God and I put my focus on God and I grow up a confidence in His promises, then, and only then, I never fail to bear fruit want to be a fruit-bearing steward. I want to hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want to make the choice that will put me in a place of restoration and blessing because I'm abiding in His victory. It's all about Him, but it will only happen when I make Him the focus of my life. It has to be God first if I want to live out His will. This has been the Growing Hope Scripture Focus. 
The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by attribution. The sound of the door unlocking made her heart speed up. Her reasonable mind told her there was nothing on the other side, but reason had lost its argument long ago. It was time to face the past, no matter how much she wanted to run. Run, the pulse-quickening first novel in the Big Spring series from Catherine C. Lang. Don't look back. Get it today in paperback or ebook at Amazon.com or CatherineLang.com. Run. I have a secret. Actually, I have eight secrets, and I'm going to share them with you. Hi, I'm Catherine Lang, and I am the Husband Whisperer. I've learned the secrets for having the perfect spouse. The Husband Whisperer by Catherine C. Lang. Available at most online bookstores, or you can purchase your copy by visiting www.catherinelang.com slash books. Welcome back to Growing Hope Radio. I am still Catherine Lang, your Rainbows and Lollipops host, only I am even better this go around because I have made the choice to remove my mask. And walking around mask free clears the way for me to be bold in my purpose. Pursuing the unique purpose that God has for my life allows me to live in the victory and blessing that He has placed in and for my life. For the last few years, I have felt that I was just this close. I could almost see the light at the end of the tunnel, but it was more of a feeling than an actual physical light. If you've ever walked through a darkened house when the electricity has gone off, you may know what I mean. It's dark, but you can almost sense the light. And I had just enough of that sense to keep from stumbling over things. And that's kind of where I've been lately. Just enough sense to keep from stumbling. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's good or bad. And I was sharing before the break about a conversation I had with my friend Jean Hendricks and how that one conversation catapulted me from where I had settled into a place of almost enough to a place of determined persistence. One conversation reminded me that restoration of all the past, the lost time, the stolen resources, the forgotten talents, all of it was possible if I made the choice to step out of where I was and into where I was supposed to be. The place of restoration is a place squarely fixed on God and walking out a relationship with God first, foremost, and with focus. Getting to that place is not difficult. I mean, God took the time to write out the directions and everything. <laughs> I just have to follow them. First, I just have to take off the mask, which means I have to stop pretending to be in a place that I know I'm not. And that pretending is most often for my benefit more than anyone else's. I'm pretending to myself. Second, I have to choose to change my direction. I'm not where I want to be because I have not been moving in the direction I want to go. I have gotten close, but close is still far away. The only way to change is to choose different steps. Third, I have to put my attention wholly on the cross. The only way that I can walk on the water is if I have my focus on Christ. There is no other way. Unless I take uh, the action to stay focused on Him, I will sink. I have to choose to turn from where I've been looking and look at what will lead me to restoration. restoration. Fourth, I have to stop looking back at what might have been. Because if you try to plow while looking behind you, then your garden will be a disaster. I have to look at where I want to go and let that be the guiding force. And finally, I have to believe the promise. Until I believe it, and I mean that deep down in my heart belief, a belief that is natural as breathing, then I will struggle to take action in it. None of the steps that I've mentioned are easy, but they are simple. They all come down to one thing, and that one thing is me. I have to make the choice. I remember attending Happening, which is a kind of spiritual awakening, Christ-focused weekend for high school-aged people. And one of the talks was about taking off the mask and being who God designed us to be, each of us unique. I never fully understood the mask talk because I've always been one of those who kind of 
walk boldly to beat uh, the beat of my own drummer, and I always, always, always <laughs> dance like nobody was watching. Many stories I could share. But I get it right now. I, I get it. Because the masks that I wear are not so much hiding me from other people, but hiding the truth from myself. As silly as that may sound. And if I want to get to my place of restoration where I'm using all that God has given me, then I have to be truthful with myself and take off that mask. And taking off the mask will reveal that I'm not moving the way that I know I need to be moving. My husband and I were headed with the family to Camp McDowell in Alabama, a place I have been dozens upon dozens of times over the years. But it was my first time back in almost a decade. And the scenery had changed drastically. And suddenly I realized I didn't think we were going in the right direction. And we had missed a turn. I had my husband turn around and we went back. And we had to take a few trips back and forth this particular section of road. But we finally found the turn. And getting to that place of restoration will require that I change directions. Cat McDowell has a monument that has always stirred my heart. And on that trip, we went to look at this white cross that sits across the ravine from the main camp. And every time I've ever been to the camp, I've made the hike to that cross because the cross is the focus for me when it comes to Camp McDowell. The cross has to be the focus for me in all of my life. If I put God first in all of my day, in all of my choices, in all of my thoughts, then I will come to that place where I can walk on water. Restoration will arrive. But things happen along the way. I made a mistake on that trip to Camp McDowell with my family because I didn't stop to get directions. Other mistakes have cost me more than a little extra gas or a little extra travel time. If I stayed focused on the mistakes, then I would never be able to enjoy the journey. My place of restoration is in the choices ahead of me and not the mistakes behind me. I have to look ahead. I know that my choices will make a difference in my life. And I know because every morning I'm opening up the Bible and I'm reading the word that God provided for me. The word that holds the promise that he has won. And that when I choose to walk out his will, then I live in his victory. That's the answer. That's the way to restoration. That's the way to the promise. It is about taking off the mask, changing my direction, keeping the right focus, looking ahead and not behind, and also always making the foundation of the word the most important part of my journey. There are a lot of things I can do in this life. There are a lot of ways I can mess up, but there is only one way to get it right, and that is to turn from what I have been doing and turn to the one that has made the way. When I walk out in his way, in his will, in his purpose, then I live out the life that he has designed for me and that he has promised to me. And that he has created for me. It is not difficult. It is not complicated. But it is up to me. Growing Hope Radio needs to take a quick break. But when we come back, I'm going to be sharing some of these scriptures that I have been reading that have become my foundation for a restored life. Growing Hope Radio will be right back. This is the Growing Hope Review Each week I will share with you one of my favorite Bible studies, books, movies, or even television shows, and I will tell you why it moved me to share. Although I know that we will each get something different out of the things that we encounter, I also know that when we are moved by words, others are likely to be moved as well. Today's review is on the movie The Song. It's a movie I stumbled across as I was looking for something with a little bit of redeeming value to it. 
it is about the slippery slope of temptation or maybe a story of redemption or maybe it's the story of forgiveness. Depending on how you look at it, it really is all of these. Because the truth is, this movie is a unique telling of Solomon and Ecclesiastes. It's all of this and so much more. And throughout the movie, the reading of Ecclesiastes just really spoke to me. It was on my Prime account, and it is free right now with Prime. It's only 116 minutes, and the credit music is definitely worth sitting through. Now, the movie rating is PG-13, but I suspect that's for the drug and alcohol that it, it alludes to in the story, because I didn't worry about my kids walking through while I was watching it at any point. The main characters were good and had redeeming qualities, but at the same time, they also had some bad qualities and many downfalls. It really is a good portrayal of the story of Solomon and how Solomon, who chose wisdom above all things, still managed to stumble and fall despite the most wisdom that anyone has ever had. I highly recommend this movie because I came away feeling warm and hopeful and recognizing that the choice is mine. This has been the Growing Hope Review. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. R&D Computer Solutions, serving all your computer needs. We provide low-cost hosting options, complete website development, and online troubleshooting service. No matter what your needs, the staff at R&D Computer Solutions will be there to help you find the answer. Visit www.rdcss.com to learn more about R&D Computer Services, a family-owned and Christian-run quality computer business. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Got hope? Growing hope seeks to instill the courage that your heart needs to live out the bold life grounded in hope. The monthly newsletter offers tips, inspirational stories, and scriptures to help grow up hearts that are open to pursue the extraordinary. Visit katherinelane.com slash promotion and sign up and receive a moment of hope. The Growing Hope Monthly Newsletter. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Welcome back to this final segment of today's episode of Growing Hope Radio, where I, Catherine Lang, your Rainbows and Lollipops host, I have been sharing my thoughts on restoration, blessing, and using what God gave you. And I understand that it seems like our lives are crowded and overflowing with chaos. There's something happening all the time. I get it. I'm a homeschool mom. Believe me, I get it. <laughs> But I also know that no matter how it seems in my life, I still have a choice about what I do with what happens. I look at my friend Gene Hendricks, a man always full of life and on the go, who is now confined to a wheelchair physically. But he will tell you that he is freer now than he would have ever been if it had not occurred. I have no excuse for not using what God has given me. And the best news of all is that if I make the choice right now, right this minute, to start and to live out that life of using what God has provided, then God will also provide restoration of all those mists in the past. Before the break, I shared the five points, the five steps I'm choosing to utilize in order to make the most of all that God has given me. The first is I'm removing the mask, the one I've been using to hide from myself. The second, I'm making the choice to change directions. The third, I'm turning my full attention to God. The fourth, I'm tur uh, looking ahead and not behind. And finally, I am growing up a faith that believes. I also mentioned that part of my journey is investing heavily in the word because a life of lasting will always have the word as its foundation. And since I'm talking about being uh, about using the talents that God has given us, it's important that we turn to the words of Jesus. In Matthew 25, Jesus tells the parables of the talents, where the master gives one talent, one servant five talents, one servant two talents, and one servant one talent. And when the master returns, the servants come forward and they give an account of how they utilized the talents that the master had given them. 
And the poor servant with one talent brings that one talent to him and confesses that he hid it away so he wouldn't risk losing anything. The master scolded the servant, took away his one talent, and gave it to the first servant who had doubled his earnings to ten. In Luke 19, it's another telling of a master leaving his servants with particular responsibilities. Only this time, Jesus tells the story of ten servants, and each one was given a minus, which is about equivalent to one-sixtieth of a talent. In other words, this master didn't even give him a full talent to work with and expected results. Now, some of the servants just said, no, we're not going to do it, and they walked away. One did hide his minus. Two others put their minus to work. The first work, um, the first one was able to take that one and turn it into ten. And when the master returned, he gave an account of how he had done it. The second one managed to take the one and turn it into five. And again, he gave an account and the master complimented him. Then the third, who actually did something with the talent, gave the talent to him and explained how he hid it away so he wouldn't, you know, risk losing it. But you know what? He still scolded that servant for not putting the, the I mean, the minus to work. This just goes to show us that God is not worried about the outcome as much as he is about us taking the initiative to invest what he's given us. And let's be honest, the reason God's not worried about the outcome is he already knows the outcome. <laughs> We worry about it because we don't truly believe in that deep, deep, deep part of our hearts that what God promised is going to happen. Because if I believed what God promised is going to happen, then I'd do it. I'd do it without question or hesitation because if he said it, it's done. So we need to do it because God knows that when I make the choice to put my talents to work in him and through him and for him and I'm focused on him then he has already created the outcome it is already finished it is already done Colossians 3 23 through 24 puts it simply like this whatever you do do it as unto the Lord and not for men knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward now I know I'm not doing what i do for the praise of men or for the blessing of men because if I am that's what I'm going to get the praise of men and the blessing of men I am doing what I know to do because God has raised me up for such a time as this and if I don't do it the rocks will cry out for me I honor him when I fulfill his design for my life I believe him I bless him when I choose to believe him and walk out that choice in all of my life. It is all for him. It is all through him. It is all in him. If God's not worried about it, then I'm not worried about it. Because God's got this. He knows what he's doing. I have to practice a habit of using all that God has given me to the best of my unique abilities so that I will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you so much for taking this time to join me for Growing Hope Radio. I look forward to sharing with you in the days to come as I walk out this new mask-free journey of using all that God has given me. I look forward also to hearing about you and how this show is working in your life or about what you would like to hear on this show. You can submit your ideas or questions at radio at katherinelang.com. I would love to connect with you during the week. You can find me on many of the social media. I'm Catherine C. Lang on everything. The Catherine C. Lang Facebook, at Catherine C. Lang Twitter, and The Catherine C. Lang at YouTube. Remember, be blessed and be a blessing. Thanks for joining us this week for Growing Hope with Catherine Lang. Catherine is a leader in encouragement, a networking specialist, and your Hope Smith extraordinaire. To learn more about Growing Hope, visit Catherine's website at www.catherinelang.com. That's www.k-a-t-h-r-y-n-l-a-n-g.com. Catherine is also available to speak or teach at your next event. 
Use the contact form on the website or email Catherine with queries or questions at contactus at katherinelang.com. If you are looking for more hope and inspiration for your week, you can sign up for the Reflections column that mails out each Sunday at www.katherinelang.com slash reflections. And be sure to join us back here each week for Growing Hope, where Catherine shares her heart for encouragement and her vision for hope. Until next week, keep watching for that place where your heart is open to pursue the extraordinary.